positively affects the stat sheet in many categories. Xavier goes as Paul Scruggs goes. Let's take a look at the starting lineups sponsored by Jeep. There's only one. And for Marquette, it's Tyler Kolick, Daryl Morsell, Cam Jones, Lewis, and Kirk Quet. And for Xavier, in addition to Paul Scruggs, Nate Johnson, Colby Jones, Jerome Hunter, and Zach Fremantle. The Musketeers, Colby Jones, had another player having a very good soft. The home white. Opening tap, and they will give it to Marquette to begin the game. The Marquette Golden Eagles are 8-3 and three on the season. The preseason ninth place pick in the Big East. Coming off a 67-56 loss on Saturday versus fourth-ranked UCLA. And you'll see Marquette right here get Justin Lewis involved early. Cam Jones rings in a three, his first points of the game, 6'4", freshman from Cordova, Tennessee. Cam Jones had a different mindset. He said, I'm going to get myself involved. Cam Jones has never seen a shot he doesn't like, and he's a very energized scoring freshman. Now Xavier, the preseason third place pick in the Big East, out to a great start, 10-1 record, ranks number 22 in the AP, and the winners of six straight. Johnson hits a three, and he ties the game at three apiece. If Xavier is going to continue to be the team that they are right now, they're going to need Nate Johnson to keep knocking down threes. Jones again, not this time from three. Rebound by Jerome Hunter for Xavier. Inside to Fremantle. Shot blocked away by Queth, and they play on. Here comes Marquette. Security. Queth is blocking everything that's coming in here. You can't go up weak around him. He has had long, athletic and goes and pursues block shots. Yeah, Queth leads the Big East at 2.9 blocks per game this season. Lewis on the attack. Tough shot, and he puts it in. Lewis coming back from a freshman season to a sophomore campaign, playing very well, showing his versatility right there, going off the bounce with a nice floater. Jones, shot blocked again by Queth and taken by the Golden Eagles. Here comes Lewis. Quef averaging close to three blocks a game and already has two. Marcel missing into Kolick's hands, missing that three. Weak side rebound by Kobe Jones. It's a Xavier team that has won six straight games. It's only loss of the season, November 24th against Iowa State up in Brooklyn, New York. Lost that game 82-70. Seven to shoot. Johnson off the mark on that three. Rebound Lewis. Very good defensive possession by the Golden Eagles. Justin Lewis set the tone guarding the guard. Miscommunication from Marcel to Kolick. First turnover of the game. And it goes back over to Xavier Dickey. Time for your keys for success today. Yeah, Marquette transition D. Xavier is good at rebounding and pushing out, and Marquette needs to get paint touches to make Xavier have to rotate. And then Xavier, composure versus Marquette's pressure. Xavier breaks the pressure. Benji inside in this first action of the day. The reigning Big East player of the week goes inside and scores a two. Picking up where he left off. That's why he's the player of the week in the Big East. 35, 31 points against Cincinnati. And he's just stepped up big for this team. Lewis, a three, his second basket of the game. He has five points. And back and forth we go. Marquette by three. Only shooting 28% from three, but has the capability to knock him down when he's wide open. That's the versatility Justin Lewis provides. Jones in the lane. Fremantle up top. Nunji high arcing three. You're going to see a lot of versatility in this game from the forwards and the bigs on both teams. Nunji right there showing his stretch, big shooting abilities, knocking down a three. Tied at eight. Back and forth we go in the early moments of the game. Lewis leans in, missing the shot, but he's fouled. He will head to the line and shoot two. 
Justin Lewis is a difficult cover when he's on the perimeter. He has the ability to put the ball on the floor, as you saw right there. He can maneuver using his body, spin moves, and right there draws the foul on Fremantle. Lewis, redshirt freshman, leads Marquette in scoring this year at nearly 15 points a game. Dickey, he has already three double-doubles through 11 games this year. Well, he's listed as a freshman. I've been calling him a sensational sophomore because this is second season. With all of what's going on, the players getting, you know, the COVID redo year, I still consider him a sophomore. If they want to say he's a freshman, he's listed cool. All I know is Justin Lewis is a dynamic, versatile scoring forward. Yeah, we talked to Coach Shaka Smart before the game, says he loves his growth. He's a very emotional player. Says that can be both a positive and a negative for this team. But so far, more positive than negative. He hits both free throws. He has seven points. And Dickey, here comes the full court pressure. And this is where I was talking about the Musketeers having composure versus the pressure. That's that. Shaka Smart stamped trademark full court defense and putting their getting their hands on the ball for deflections. The more deflections, the better you help your defensive field goal percentage. It's a very scrappy Marquette team. Three losses this year, eight and three record. Those three losses all coming to ranked teams in Shaka Smart's first season. And uh, Shaka Smart said before the game he likes how this team is starting to learn and grow and develop. This team is getting to know each other because it has uh, so many newcomers on this team, just three returning scholarship players on this team from a year ago. Benji leaves it short, rebound Lewis. Picador, very good defensively against Nunji, not letting him get to the middle. And a steal by Xavier, Odin. Trying to race down the floor, goes inside, lays it in. If you're careless with the ball around this Xavier team, they will make defense turn into offense as Odom gets the steal and finishes in transition. Tied at 10 and a whistle inside, and we get a timeout on the court. Call the police, 911, it's a steal, and Odom goes. Had another good game against Morehead State earlier this week. And Coach Steele said before the game, when it comes to Jack Nungy, the transfer from Iowa, he says he's been so consistent. He's been so mature with his game, has good size, good skills, a high execution guy, a quick learner, and perhaps the most important part, rarely makes mistakes. Yeah, when you utilize, as you see, Kolek knock down a three from the corner, as coaches utilize the transfer portal, you're able to get veteran college players like Nudgy who can come in and pick up with his experience and give you offense and defense. Adam Kunkel into the game with the ball. High rising three. And a weak side rebound by Kolek. Kolek. On the drive, stopped by Odom, and a steal by Xavier. Turnover number three on Marquette. Numbers for Xavier. Scruggs lays it in. Paul Scruggs is one of the best basketball thieves in college basketball. He comes up with steals one and a half a game. Lewis misfires on that three. Rebound Nunji for Marquette. The miss on the three, and the rebound by Xavier. Here's Scruggs. Scrubs down the lane, left hand, curls off the rim. Hunter puts it in. Scrubs was looking for a foul. It was chest to chest contact. The defender went straight up. No call. And Justin Lewis is in pain. He took a stumble and a tumble down on the floor. Kind of buckled his ankle. Hopefully he's okay. As you see, Hunter knocked down the baseline short corner jump shot off the loose ball hunter another veteran college player transfer that coach still picked up in the transfer portal which i call the free agency of college basketball brock and dickie a fast pace to the start of this game which team does this favor early on it favors both teams they both like to get up and down i would say the advantage is a little bit to the Musketeers because they have a veteran team where Marquette is a more young, inexperienced team. They call goaltending, offensive goaltending on Marquette, and it goes back to Xavier. It's 
So they wave off the basket by Marquette. Did Xavier ball trying to break the press? Here's Hunter for Xavier, which is eight and zero oh on this floor this season. Xavier needs to get ball movement and body movement, not to be stagnant. Get the Golden Eagles moving around defensively. Kunkel in the lane, tough fadeaway shot and foul on the floor. We bought the shot. The foul is underneath. It's on Marquette. Xavier crashing those offensive boards. You see Hunter using his length. The Musketeers average 41 rebounds a game. They're a plus nine on every team they play against. So they don't count the basket. Still Xavier Ball though on the baseline. Struggs to inbound underneath. Nunji against Picadaro. Tries to feed it inside to Scruggs out of bounds. First turnover of the day on the Musketeers. And like Coach Still said, not normally the case with Nunji making mistakes. That was a mistake right there. You can expect that that shouldn't happen anymore for the rest of the game. Yeah, we talked to Coach Steele before the game. He says he likes this team's depth. Every guy, almost any guy every night can have a great night. It's a very well-balanced scoring team. Four guys averaging double figures in scoring so far this year. Well, I like this game because both teams pressure full court. They'll give you a little three-quarter court, and they both attack the basket. As you see, Igadara taking it off the bounce. A much improved player from his first year, adding weight and strength and building his confidence. Almost a steal. It is a steal by Marquette. Second turnover on Xavier. Prosper misses the jam. And they play on. Rebound by Xavier. Well, I like the aggressiveness. Scruggs. And an offensive foul. Over the back foul called on Xavier. It's the Big East opener for both teams. Marquette and Xavier back and forth battle here in the first few minutes of this game. And you can see the 2-2-1 two, two, press by the Musketeers to get Marquette to take time off the shot clock. Greg Elliott's reach in foul called on Hunter. And that's his first. Yeah, I feel the pain, Hunter. If that foul, that <laughs> foul is on him, they, he's feeling like that's a ticky-tack foul right there. He was moving his feet. Moving his feet on the, okay, a little, they got their arms tangled. But there wasn't necessarily an advantage in Hunter's favor right there with the bump. Kolick into the lane, running left-hander, and he banks it in. Kolick taking advantage of a Deontay Miles guarding him on the perimeter, perimeter, which Miles usually does a good job switching out on guards right there, getting taken to the basket. Hunter off the mark on that three, rebound Tyler Kolick, who leads the Big East this year in assists per game at 5.6 assists a game. Nicotaro inside gets the roll. Kolek with the early Christmas gift to Igadara. The young freshman has unbelievable vision when he has the ball in his hands. Hunter into the lane, and he's fouled. He'll head to the line and shoot two. Kolek has in five assists a game. When he has the ball, his vision is always on. Has those x-ray glasses, sharing the ball. And this kid gets excited when he makes plays for his teammates like he did right there. Jerome Hunter at the line, transfer from Indiana. As he misses the first free throw. He's a great free throw shooter, 88% coming into the game today, 15 out of 17. He had a career high, 15 points, six rebounds, four assists in his last game on Wednesday night on this floor against Moorhead State. Yeah, he's a utility player, a Swiss Army knife. He blends well with the team. He will need to make more threes, get his three-point shooting percentage up. But he affects the game defensively 
because he can guard multiple positions. Missed two free throws all year. Coming into the game, that's two misses in a row here in this game today. Came in as a 88% free throw shooter. Here's Marcel trying to get going. Leans inside. Shot altered by Hunter. Taken away by Hunter. And they play on. And you saw that defensive versatility using his limp. Making that shot difficult to Marcel and getting a hand on the block. And a steal by Marquette. Turnover on Xavier. It's third. Here comes Marcel. Marcel spots up for three, and down it goes for Daryl Marcel, his first points of the game, and a timeout taken by Xavier. Marcel! Great, his team's defense has a ways to go, but as far as offense goes, and shooting the three tonight, 57%, four of seven, overall shooting 53%. 8 of 15. Well, I mean, the analytics are the analytics. The stats are the stats. But I would say Marquette is a better shooting team than the statistics show. They have capable shooters. They just have to zone in and knock them down. Johnson, another three for Xavier. His second three of the game. He is second in the Big East in three-point shooting at 46.3% this year. Knock him down like that. The Musketeers sharing the ball, finding Nate Johnson in the corner. Can't leave him open. You have to be aware at all times. Mitchell inside and floats in a two. Marquette by seven. We played nine minutes here in the first half at the Cintas Center in Cincinnati, Ohio. And Marquette's press forces Xavier to take off time off the shot clock, disrupts their rhythm offensively, and now having to scramble around and get into a set. Jones on the drive, over everything, caught by Nunchi, blocked, and taken away by Marquette. Elliott into the lane, scoop shot, scores off the glass. The silky smooth play by Greg Elliott. Coming off a big game last game, and showing his ability to be more than just a shooter. You see him attacking the plate with the underhand scoop layup. Jones inside again. This time he banks it in. And when you're going against pressure, especially in full court, you need to put a player who can make plays in the middle, a player who can pass, dribble, and shoot when he gets the ball in the middle and can be aggressive like Kobe Jones. Elliott needs help. Mitchell, five to shoot. Inside, shot blocked out of bounds by Johnson. Stays with Marquette underneath. Only three on the shot clock. Very good defensive possession by Johnson. Underrated, underrated defender. Quick hands. He can move his feet. He can switch out. Very good lockdown D and not going for the pump fake. Kolek to inbound for Marquette. Only three to shoot for Marquette on this possession. Here's Marcel. That's a long three at the buzzer. Missing everything out of bounds. A shot clock violation. When you only have three seconds left on a baseline out of bounds and you're Marquette, execution is key right there because you have to get a solid look. Right there, the ball went too far out and had to take a long distance three that didn't touch anything. So, Dickie Xavier struggling a little bit from the field, down by seven. Where does it go to get some points? Well, they need to go back to Kobe Jones, get in the ball screen, get movement. As you see right there, Kobe Jones is now attacking the freshman Kohler. He has the size, he has the strength, and he has the athleticism. Get the ball to Kobe Jones using your ball screens with Fremantle or Nunji and attack the freshman like he did. Fouls on Kolick is first. At the line, Colby Jones, last year named to the Big East All-Freshman team. Dickey, Xavier has had a player named to the Big East All-Freshman team in five of the last seven years. Yeah, Xavier is stepping out. I mean, they're bringing in recruits that are coming in getting the job done. They might not be the biggest names, but they're coming in and they fit Coach Steele's system. He implements them well. And they grow and develop with their maturation process at a good rate. Jones goes two for two at the line and custody down to five. 26-21.
Lewis, foul line jumper, no. And the rebound by Johnson for Xavier, trying to cut into the lead some more. Fremantle, that's a three. Jones had it for a moment into the hands of Kolick. Here comes Xavier clad in navy blue. In the corner is Lewis. Driving inside. High Baker and it goes in. Oh, what a play. Justin Lewis is able to effectively get to the paint because of the quick ball movement. Greg Elliott shooting to the corner. The defense having to recover. He attacks the defense and gets to the paint. The paint touches that Marquette looks for every game. Jones inside. Had it blocks. Taken away by Elliott. Lead pass up the floor to Lewis. Alley oop for Queth. And he can't finish. And the rebound by Fremantle for Xavier. Scruggs into the lane. Plays it in. And that's when Scruggs is at his best. In transition, going to his left, attacking the glass. When he's going downhill, it's hard to stop him. Averaging 11 points a game, has four points on two of four shooting so far in this one. As Coach Steele said before the game, Paul Scruggs, the heart and soul of this team. The Musketeers dropping back in a 2-3 zone. Lewis, short, rebound Johnson. I like how they switched up their defense, dropped back to a 2-3 zone, knowing that Marquette is not a high-level three-point shooting team. Missing the three is Scruggs. Rebound by Marquette and Kirk Queth. Here comes Kolick. That was a heat check by Scruggs. You have to live with that one. Your veteran player, your heart and soul of the team, checking his long-range shooting out. Marcel might have been partially blocked. It's controlled by Xavier. Johnson wide open. Step back three. Nunji tried for the tip in. He's fouled, and he'll go to the line when we come back. Scruggs in transition to open court. This is when he finds his opportunity. He splits the seam. 11, the Big 12 Tournament Championship at Texas last season. He's made eight NCAA tournaments in 12 seasons, and he's only had one losing season in his entire career. He's had a very impressive career as a head coach. He's taken his staple of defense and energy, three-point shooting. Everywhere he's gone, he's brought it here. And he has the right temperament to coach today's young kids where he gets a lot out of them. And he's coached quite a few NBA players. Nunji goes over two at the strike. Still a five-point game. Marquette in the lead. And now Xavier showing some little three-quarter court pressing defense of its own. You see the Musketeers stand in this 2-3 zone, spreading it out a little bit. And that's what you want to do, set a screen on the ball handler. Elliott misfires from three. Offensive rebound, Jones. Back to Morcell. That's a three. Rebound, Nunji, the seven-footer. Claims the rebound for Xavier, clad in white. Here's Johnson, thought about the three. And elects to go to Odom. And this is where Xavier has to figure out, as you see Odom using that athleticism, speed, and quickness. That is his main skill, his bread and butter. Attacking the paint and attacking the basket. First two points of the game for Dwan Odom, the 6'2 sophomore from Alpharetta, Georgia. Marquette's lead is down to three. Lob inside to Quet. And it crawls off the rim, and Nunji taps it out to Jones for the rebound. Very good catch by Quet. That was a hot pass. He went up and retrieved the ball, just have to finish the layup. Odom. Nunji, the pump fake. Back inside to Nunji. Works against Kirk Queth. Couple of seven footers going at it. And a reach in foul called on Queth. Odom not known as a shooter, but he is known right here for attacking the basket, using that quickness, just lowering the defense to sleep and the crossover, the simple right to left crossover to turn down the ball screen for the open seam to the basket. Yeah, last year Odom led the Big East in assist to turnover ratio at 3.11 and he's become more of a scorer here this season averaging six points a game for this Xavier team. Well, if you're looking at the scout reports as you see a steal by Marquette. Marcel all the way, left hand and scores. 
Marquette doing a very good job with their team defense right now. They're getting their hands on all loose balls, creating turnovers. Here's Fremantle back after foot surgery. Only his sixth game this year for Xavier. Leans inside, banks it in. Nice footwork by Fremantle. Keeping his foot down, looking to make passes out. Saw the defense shift it and was able to pivot and get an open look. Wide open in the corner, Joplin. Rebound by Xavier and Kobe Jones. One of the best rebounding guards in college basketball, averaging three and a half offensive rebounds a game, Kobe Jones. Shot was blocked, but it's out of bounds off of Marquette, stays with Xavier. And here's Fremantle attacking from outside to the back down. Just pivot. This is where you work on your footwork. As a young kid, get outside, work on your base, your balance, and your footwork, and then you can make moves like Fremantle. Yeah, Coach Steele, happy to have Fremantle back this year after missing the first six games with a foot injury. And they say he is quickly shaking off the rust, and he loves having Fremantle and Nunji on the floor at the same time this year. Odom into the lane. Got it. Again, if you're watching the scout report, you know Odom is an attack guy. He beat Ball State last season. As you see another steal. All the way for the jam. Timeout taken by Marquette. Savior back in the lead by one. Savior leading Marquette in the first half. 4.38 to go until the break. Brock Bowling and... Former Providence Friar star Dickie Simpkins with you. Okay, Dickie, what's been the most, most impressive to you about this Xavier run here in the first half? It's the points off the bench. They have 13 points off the bench, led by Odom Six. And how they, the bench players have ignited their offense when the starters were stagnant. Lewis inside, crawls off the rim. Rebound, fought for. Nenji's got it for Xavier. Here's Odom, scored on a dunk a moment ago. Fremantle bumped and fouled by Oso Igadaro. That's his first. And that's where Xavier is at their best, getting defensive rebounds, pushing out in transition. The Golden Eagles' transition defense is important. Getting back, building a wall, protecting the paint. Odom, not afraid to go inside. Among the trees, and he scores again. Ten points for Dwan Odom. That ties his season high this year. And Xavier leads by three. There's no way Dwan Odom is 6'1". He is playing like he's 6'9". A man possessed in the paint. And Elliott shoots in a silencer. He's shooting 52% from downtown this year. That's his first three. He has five points. Picking up from where he left off last game, shooting four for seven from the three. He is a three-point sniper. Jones, bump foul. That's the second on Igadaro. Foul on Marquette. Back and forth we go here in Cincinnati. Tied at 30. Trying to get five stops in a row. But what Coach Steele focuses on is three steals, three kills, as much as you can throughout a game. Dictates the momentum defensively for your team. Front end of the one and one free throw missed by Xavier. Xavier struggling at the line today, just two of seven at the strike. And that's a team who's improved in their free throw shooting. They were shooting in the 60s before today and, and then moved up to 72%. But like you said, Brock struggling. Lewis on the baseline finds Kolick. Back in the other corner, it goes to Elliott. And tried to float it inside the cliff, and he turned it over. Five turnovers on Marquette. And steal saved somehow by Kolick into the hands of Morcell. And this is where you, you, you want to play fast, but not in a hurry. Morcell inside, missing. Rebound Fremantle for Xavier. And what I mean right there is when you're playing fast, and you look like you're in a hurry, then it makes the game look messy. And then you're prone to mistakes. And Tyler Kolick just picked up his third foul of the game. Yeah, a lot of lot of players being in a hurry. I'm fine with you playing fast, but then when you're in a hurry, you're getting bad shots. You're not in position to really get back. Yeah, what did uh, John Wooden at UCLA say? Uh, 
be quick, but don't hurry. <laughs> well, when I was playing, I never really knew what that meant. How do you, how do you, how do you be quick and not in a hurry? I thought being quick, you want to hurry. As I got older, I started understanding. You can play fast, but don't play frantic. Two for two for Johnson. He has eight points. Xavier four of nine at the line. Xavier back in the lead by two. This is where the Golden Eagles, right there, set a screen against the zone to turn the zone into man-to-man. -man. Shot clock at eight. Jones, Morcell, six to shoot. Morcell puts it a three. Daryl Morcell, his second three of the game. He has eight points. And another transfer college veteran. Defensive player of the year in the Big Ten at Maryland last season, but also showing you his offensive abilities to knock down threes. Johnson from the foul line. Rebound ripped away by Lewis. Here comes Marcel. Marquette by one here on the road. Big East opener for both teams. Jones, the freshman, and a redshirt freshman, Lewis. Lewis, quick shoot three, and the rebound by Nunji for Xavier. Yeah, I'm sorry, Brock. I don't know about that shot right there by Justin Lewis. Could get a better shot at that time of the shot clock and the momentum of the game, knowing the time score situation and understanding the, the success or not having success in the last several possessions. Shock is smart, pleading his case to the official. Been a great back and forth ball game. Lead changes galore. Marquette in the lead by one, 36 35. Here is Nate Johnson. 68% free throw shooter. Under staff of the one and one is good. Coming up on the Jeep Halftime Report, we'll have highlights from around the nation, first half stats and analysis all coming up at the half. I never got, Brock, how a guy can shoot 45% from the three and then make Johnson shoot 68% from the free throw line. <laughs> the only thing I could get out of that is he doesn't get enough attempts to get in a rhythm. But it always baffles me when guards shoot the ball well from the three, but not from the free throw line. Jones having trouble finds more set inside 90 seconds to go in this back and forth game Xavier leads by one Again, if you're Golden Eagles, you want to get a guy you have Greg Elliott in the middle There he is in the middle floats it up rebound foul and it's on whom on Justin Lewis of Marquette. That's his first. And you see Coach Smart right there teaching, taking this moment during the free throw, shooting to teach his players, get them to understand what is needed, where the mistakes were, talking about next possession, There's Shaka Smart, says he's glad to be back in his home state of Wisconsin, says he loves the fan base of Marquette, loves the administration, and likes the direction this team is going, 8-3, and three. won 13 games all of last year, already eight wins this year, all three losses this year by Marquette coming to rake teams. Yes, he's very excited, very impressed with the upside of his young players, the freshman he has for the future. Under a minute to go in the first half. Jones. Lewis. Loses it. Got it back. And a loose ball foul called on Scruggs. But did the shot clock expire first? I believe it did. Nope, it's on Scruggs. Or is it? No, they got the defensive stop okay. right there. The Golden Eagles played right in the hands of the Musketeer, passing the ball around, not getting anything aggressive to the paint, not setting a screen on the ball. 
and the shot clock expires. About a four-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Xavier with the ball up two. Fremantle works against Quest. Tries to feed it inside. Steal by Quest. Turnover on Xavier. It's sixth. And the shot clock and the game clock virtually identical. Marquette can essentially hold for the last shot of the first half. More sell Sam one shot, and he's absolutely right. You want to be able to get that last shot to either tie the game or go up with the lead going into half. Seven seconds to go. Here's Jones. Three to go. Inside steal out of bounds. It stays with Marquette with 1.5 to go. And right here, the officials have another situation where the shot clock may have ran out. It's seventh turnover of the game. They tack on a few more ticks onto the clock for Xavier. 1.9 to go in the first half. So you want to get this inbound pass to at least half court, utilizing your bigs or using a lot of the guard on the move. They throw it the length of the floor, Nunji catches, shoots, and he misses it at the buzzer, and halftime is here. Well, they utilize their big, throwing it long to the wide receiver, Nunji, he misses it. Back and forth exchange here today. And then Xavier, they just need to keep doing what they're doing, defensively coming up with rebounds, forcing Marquette to shoot threes, and then attacking the paint. These two teams last year played twice, each team winning on its home floor. And now starting out Big East Conference play again this year in Cincinnati. Scruggs on the attack, missing the shot inside. Out of bounds, it goes back to Marquette. Daryl Morsell hobbling right now. Seems like he came down on his ankle. Whenever you do that, you got to kind of jog it out, stand up, keep it loose. And if it's not a if it's not a bad tweak, you can usually kind of walk it off and it could get better. Daryl Morsell transfer from Maryland. He was the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year last year. This year has become more of an offensive scorer for this Marquette team. He transferred to Marquette, wanted to be challenged, wanted a bigger role. And Shaka Smart said, come on over and play for us. Well, it's one of the advantages you have for being able to transfer and play right away, or if you're a grad transfer, to go to another program, maximize your ability, show things that you felt like you could do or you have developed. And Morcell is doing that here at Marquette. Turnover on Xavier at seventh. Here comes Marquette. And a turnover on Marquette. Here comes Xavier. Strikes the lob and the slam by Fremantle. A veteran college player. Scruggs with the ability to get the ball back, even though he made a turnover. His anticipation in the passing lane is tremendous with the steal and the assist, sharing the ball to Fremantle. Xavier by four. It trailed by as many as nine in the first half. And a whistle. Offensive foul on Kolick. That's his fourth foul of the game. Right here, the steal. And then the holiday gift to Fremantle. Passing it up high. And Fremantle playing it up high with the lob pass and the finish by the big man. This is Xavier's 12th game of the year, and Fremantle missed the first six games of the year, recovering from foot surgery, shaking off the rest quickly, according to head coach Travis Steele, and Coach Steele glad to have him back in the lineup here today. Here's Johnson, quick spot up three, got it! His third three of the game, timeout taken by Marquette. Playing in like his third game since the NCAA had cleared him to be able to play. It was a special moment that he had made a call to his father to let him know. And then to cap it off with a game winner because this Marquette-Xavier rivalry or this, this intense matchup, it's usually a tight game. And getting inside and scoring an easy two is Greg Elliott's quick two off the bench. He has seven, and Xavier's lead is trimmed down to five. And that was good by Greg Elliott, not settling for a shot, jump shot, being aggressive, knifing around the defense and getting right to the basket. Jones tight ropes the baseline, doing circles. Johnson, the pump fake, spots up, and missing that three. Offensive rebound, Fremantle, and he lost it. And a foul is called. It's on Nate Johnson. 
you know, we saw Adam Kunkel's three-point game winner. Xavier had kind of took a hold of the momentum the last two minutes of this game so far. It looked like it was going to get away, but you can never count on that because this Marquette-Xavier matchup usually comes down to a tight game, Brock. Comes down to game winning shots like that. Yeah, that was the big uh, Big East Conference opener for both teams on this floor last year. And nearly a year ago to the day, they meet again on this floor for the Big East opener for both teams this year. Queth needs help. Five to shoot. Marcel. Pull up, jump shot, rims out on him, rebound, Johnson, correction is rebounded by Scruggs for Xavier. Scruggs inside Hunter, outside Fremantle, into the lane, reverse layup is good! Oh, how did he do that? And you can see that foot is feeling better and better every game. Fremantle showing the abilities he showed last season when he averaged 16 points and 7 rebounds and led this team in both categories. He could take bigs off the bounce, attacking the basket. Yeah, last year he was named the Big East Most Improved Player of the Year, as well as second team all Big East. And here's where he's at his best, attacking Quay, who is trying to close out, attacks the body of the shot blocker, and uses the other side of the basket so he doesn't get his shot sent back to him by the leading shot blocker in the Big East. All right, so Dickey Marquette is down seven. How does it chip away at this lead? Well, they have to get Justin Lewis involved. Justin Lewis is not on the court right now. Now you have to use a lot of ball screen, get a lot of movement. Marcel is your most aggressive player, as you see him right there, using his strength. His athleticism to be able to double pump and make a difficult acrobatic shot. That's his 10th point of the game. Inside for Xavier Jones. Score the basket. And one. He'll head of the line for a free throw. Kobe Jones, you saw him flex that right bicep right there. This is just using that added muscle he put on in the offseason. Taking advantage of the freshman Jones. Putting him in the basket right here. Just getting physical. Give him that little shoulder. Draw the foul and the finish for a chance for a three-point play. Cam Jones, the foul. Shooting the free throw is Colby Jones, and he scores his eighth point of the game. Xavier now 8 of 14 at the line, and the lead is back up to 8. Right now, you're the Golden Eagles. You're trying to figure out how you, you get Greg Elliott a shot. Marcel lost it, got it back, shot blocked by Fremantle, and the outlet pass to Jones. Hashtag security, protect my house. Jones all the way, no, put back, missed by Hunter, but he's fouled over the back, and he'll head to the line and shoot two. And that was started by the defense. Fremantle feeling more comfortable every game, coming off the energy, staying alert, protecting the basket with the shot block, and then Musketeers doing what they do best, a defensive stop, an acceleration in transition, drawing the foul. Hunter missed two free throws in the first half, makes that one. And Xavier has gone to the line now 15 times. This will be free throw attempt number 16. Marquette has only gone to the line twice. It is two of two. And speaking of two of two, Jerome Hunter goes 2 of 2 on that trip, and the lead is double figures now again for Xavier. Well, when you have a discrepancy like that at the free throw shooting, that means one team is super aggressive, and that also usually results in that team dominating the scoring. Elliott into the lane, bobbled, loose. Stolen by Xavier. Turnover number nine on Marquette. Jones runs it down somehow, and now Xavier will set up his offense as they go inside to Fremantle. Works against Morcell, and a foul on Morcell, and that's his second of the game. Timeout on the court. 15-41 to go. In this Big East opener for both teams, Xavier at home leads by 10. Using full-court defense, so it's an up-and-down pace. 
And it's going to stay, even though Xavier's up by 10 right now, still 15 minutes left, I expect this game to still be a close battle. 15-41 to go inside the Scruggs, shot blocked by Queth and taken by Prosper for Marquette. Here comes Elliott and he's fouled by Scruggs and that's his third of the game. You have to have, in order to have a good defensive team, you have to have an anchor to the defense like Queth. He's the anchor to the defense. That is what you call a rim protector using his length, athleticism, pursuing blocks, helps your field goal defense percentage. Yeah, Kirk Queth, we talked about it in the first half, leads the Big East in blocks so far this year, 2.9 rejections per game. Where we're having a problem right now for Marquette is Tyler Kolek is in foul trouble. And he is a guy that can make plays brought for the other players. The other guards are scorers. They need a guy who can distribute. And Kolek is on the bench with four fouls. That's a detriment to the Golden Eagles. Fouls on Nate Johnson. His second. At the line is Greg Elliott. And in his last game, one week ago today, against fourth-ranked UCLA, Dickey, he had a career-high 22 points. He made six threes. This was all off the bench. Yeah, he has he has stepped up as of lately. This is a guy who came in physically deficient as a freshman, has gained a little bit of muscle. He's had some trouble with the injury bug throughout his career. And now he's getting an opportunity to show why he's a Marquette Golden Eagle. His offensive abilities to knock down threes. Only the third and fourth free throws attempted in this game by Marquette. Here's Jones for Xavier. Rims around and out. Him will be down by Elliott for Marquette into the hands of Jones. Here's Lewis. Cut off of the baseline and finds Prosper in the corner. Elliott, quick shot for three. Off the mark, but he's fouled by Johnson, and Elliott will head of the line to shoot three. The one thing about Greg Elliott, he's going to be ready to shoot. As soon as he caught this, he's ready to get it up. Uh, I mean, he, 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 he has to be able to land. I wouldn't say that he blatantly kicked his legs out. I mean, he shot in a shooter's momentum. And if you're Johnson, you have to give him room to land. Nine points for Elliott last year, shot 45% from three for the year. This year, coming into the game, shooting 52% from downtown. Good free throw shooter, 85% on the year. He's made two, one more coming. Now, after the Golden Eagles make these free throws by Greg Elliott, they still need to keep the pressure full court. Make the Musketeers take time off the shot clock. Disrupt their rhythm offensively and try to come up with a deflection that leads into a steal. 11 points for Greg Ali Elliott all off the bench. Six of the 11 coming in the first few minutes of this second half as Odom goes inside. Dipsy do and he scores. And Odom just doing what Odom does, using speed and athleticism to get to that paint and put pressure on the Golden Eagles at the basket. New season high, 12 points in this game for Odom, and Justin Lewis drops it in. And they have to figure out how they can get the ball back to Justin Lewis. Foul underneath, it's on Marquette. Falzard Oso Igadaro, that's his third of the game, number 13 in navy blue for Marquette. Can't leave Igadaro down there by himself to rebound. You have to gang rebound as a team. It's a group effort on the boards. Here's Kunkel, has been quiet today, scoreless so far. Jones inside Nunji, double teamed, goes up and can't hit it. Taken away by Lewis for Marquette. Elliott, spot up three. Out of bounds, they say, off of Odin. It stays with Marquette underneath. Did you like that shot? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it because it's your shooter getting a look in transition. 
So I have to live with it. He just came off of getting fouled and knocking down three free throws. So I want to see if he can. He can. He's allowed a heat check. Iguodaro scores inside, and the foul is sixth point of the game. He'll head to the line for a free throw. And that's what you want to do as a team. When you have a baseline out of bounds, you're trying to score. You want to be aggressive. Iguodaro just making a nice cut to the basket. Colby Jones falling asleep on the switching and communication. Nice pass by Greg Elliott. Iguodaro at the line. Coach Smart really likes the potential of this kid. Says he handles the ball well, passes well, hissing the free throw there. He's 6'9", but if you throw it up around the rim, Dickie, if it's anywhere close to the rim, he'll go get it. Yeah, right down. yeah he's, he has long arms in addition to athleticism. The combo of those two things makes him intriguing. Kunkel inside. The hero from a year ago scores his first two of the day. Kunkel must have been at the Zach Fremantle footwork camp because that looked like what Zach Fremantle did in the first half. Mitchell down the lane. Shot blocked by Hunter. It's taken by Kunkel. Numbers for Xavier. Kunkel. He's fouled to go ahead of the line to shoot two. Sign me up for the Zach Fremantle footwork camp because he's teaching Kunkel how to use the same footwork. Pump fake, show the ball, up and under. That was a big man move right there <laughs> by a guard who knocks down shots. Kunkel at the line, 66% free throw shooter. And he rims in the first one for his third point of the game. He had 12 points, four made three-pointers, and four assists in his last game in the win on Wednesday versus Moorhead State. One for two on that trip. Xavier has gone to the line 18 times. Marquette only eight. Xavier by seven, 13 and a half minutes to go. Xavier dropped back in the 2-3 zone. Lewis, short, put back, Prosper, no, oh, and the rebound ripped away by Jones for Xavier. This is where the Musketeers have to utilize their twin towers right here. There's one of them, Fremantle, on the baseline again. Tries to pass, and the ball kicks. Shot clock will reset to 20. Marquette playing with more of a smaller lineup, or would be considered a smaller lineup, versus Fremantle and Nunji. Xavier has to take advantage of their bigs. Dickey, Xavier in the lead by seven, and look at some of the leading scores for the team this year, a little low point totals so far in this game. Well, you know, this shows that you have a team with balanced scoring. They have four guys who average double figures. They have guys who come off the bench that can score in double figures. So that's good when you have your whole team be able to step up when some of the usual suspects are not getting baskets. Out of inside, outside Jones. Here's Nunji. That's a three. Rebound ripped away by Elliott for Marquette. Lewis trying to create. Floats it up inside and gets the bounce. And that's when Lewis is at his best. Slashing, diving to the basket, getting in the paint with two feet. He averages 15 points a game. He has 13 so far tonight. Here's Nunji against Lewis. Hike mismatch there. Nunji. Fremantle against Ogadaro. Goes to the jump hook. No. Tapped up, missed by Nunji. Rebound Ogadaro for Marquette. Lewis in rhythm. A three. Rebound sky high four by Jones. And then a foul by Ogadaro. 90 feet away from the basket. Timeout on the court. Xavier at home. Leads by five, 11 56. Oh, we're right here. And he delivered that with a presence that motivates his young team. You know, he took VCU to the Final Four in 2011. I asked him what's his message been to this team in his first year at Marquette. 
And he says, in order to win at a championship level, you have to make it about each other, not make it about individuals. He thinks this team can get there, but his guys are still getting to know each other because there's so many newcomers on this team still trying to build up the team chemistry. Yeah, and as he's building that chemistry, he's building a culture, Brock. He, had, he came to Marquette with a book with the culture that he wants so it can always be a foundation of where he's building from and building these young players and he's already experienced beating xavier twice one it's at vcu and once at texas so he's trying to get a third time right here in his early Big East coaching debut right here in the Big East conference Got to get Greg Elliott going, get an open look, try to get it to Justin Lewis in the middle so he can attack the basket. Five to shoot. Lewis on the baseline, left hand. He's fouled with four to shoot. Foul on Xavier, and Lewis will head of the line and shoot two. And that's what I like to see with Justin Lewis. I know he wants to shoot threes. I know he's capable. He's not shooting a high percentage. That might have been a hook. Fremantle was wanting a hook. Nunji was wanting a hook right there. But at the end of the day, Lewis being aggressive is what the Golden Eagles need right now. 13 points in the game so far. Again, three double doubles on the season through 11 games. That's point number 14. Marquette getting the line a little more often here in the second half. Now seven of nine at the line of the game. And I'm not saying for Justin Lewis to not take three-point shots. But right now, in the moment of this game, be aggressive to the paint, draw fouls, take opportunity threes when you have good looks. Reaching foul called on Greg Elliott. That's his third of the game. Babyface Elliott. He didn't think he fouled right there. He's using his hands. He's talking to the official right now. And now uh, three throws the rest of the way for both teams with 11.21 to go. Here's Colby Jones. And Coach Travis Steele said before the game he's a tremendous defender. He can defend positions one through five. He's made tremendous strides with this game here in the last year or so. This is the front end of the one and one. Two possession game. Marquette down five. Approaching 11 minutes to go. Both teams not getting it done from the free throw line the last couple of trips. That's going to be important coming down this stretch. Marcel, fadeaway jumper, curls off the rim. Fremantle recovers it on the rebound for Xavier. Now that was a good look for the Golden Eagles right there in the elbow area. Blocking foul called on Stevie Mitchell, his first. The one thing I can give the Musketeers, they're taking advantage and being aggressive going at the Golden Eagles freshmen. Making them have to defend Odom just being strong like he's been the whole game. There's no reason to settle for jump shots first in the possession. Attack the paint, and if you get a kick out, look for an open J, then take it. One and one for Dwan Odom, 82% free throw shooter. He averages six points a game. He had 10 in the first half. That's now point number 13 in this game. And he's been working on his shot mechanics, not known as a jump shot shooter, has been back in the lab working on his mechanics, has become an improved free throw shooter at 82%. He had six points and six assists in the team's last game against Moorhead State on Wednesday night. Goes one of two at the strike. Marquette ball down two possessions, nearing the midway point to the second half of play. We're going to see how Tyler Kolick can play right now with four fouls. Can he still facilitate? Can he still manage this team without getting his fifth foul and make plays for his teammates? Lewis over Nunji. No, tapped up and in by Morsell. Good job by Morsell using his athleticism, hustle plays. Offensive rebound. The Musketeers not doing a good job recognizing him boxing out. Odom into the lane. The floater goes for Odom. Giving 15 points on the night. The new season high. It's been the Dewan Odom show. He's been taking over the game every time he's on the court. 15 points off the bench. It's also a new career high for Odom. 
15 points. Alley oop inside, missed, handled by Kreff, and the loose ball taken by Xavier. Xavier by six, put him again into the lane. Outside Jones, his floater, no. Rebound by Elliott for Marquette. And a steal by Odom, he's everywhere. Inside to Jones. Odom spots it for three. Almost banked it in. Loose ball, rebounding foul, it's called on Marquette. Hey, I can live with that shot by Odom. You know why, Brock? Because his activity, his motor in this game, he deserves to get an opportunity to take that open look. His anticipation in the passing lane, just setting up defensively, that's just being active. That's just understanding the passing lane, reading the passer, and getting his hands on the steal. So here's Zach Fremantle. He's a 91% free throw shooter. 11 of 12 shooting at the line this year. Nothing but net on that one. Give him seven points on the day. Free at the line. Preseason first team all Big East Conference this year. Last year was second team all Big East and was named the Big East Conference's most improved player of the year. Two of two at the strike. He has eight. The lead is eight for Xavier. 9-19 to go. Again, I'm going to say, get a playmaker in the middle, get a ball screen on the outside of the zone or the inside of the zone to turn it into man-to-man -man and then attack. Jones, Kolick spots up for three, and down it goes for Tyler Kolick, his second three of the game. He has eight points. Very good shot by Kolick. They worked the ball around. He got an open look. Hasn't been shooting the ball well, but that was a big shot. Fremantle's shot crawls off the rim. He got it back down the lane. Dipsy do now. Tapped up and in by Nunji. And I think that's how Coach Still can see how to play with his twin towers. They're being aggressive on that rim. Offensive rebounding. Jones missing. Rebound by Colby Jones for Xavier. Numbers for the Musketeers. Good transition defense by Marquette getting back on D. Yes, good defense, but also good recognition by Kobe Jones not to force the issue. Odom again, scores again, continues to add to his career high. He has 17 points on the night. You know what's interesting? The Cincinnati game, Zach Nungy, Jack Nungy stepped up off the bench. This team is so talented with so many players as you see Jones knock down an open three. The Musketeers are so talented with so many guys who can score, and now today it's Odom's turn to step up off the bench. Nunji out to Odom. He's got the hot hand over to Jones. Nunji. Rebound Cam Jones for Marquette. Marquette down two possessions inside seven and a half minutes to go. Xavier so back into a man-to-man. -man. This is when you need to get the ball screen. Lewis backs in on Fremantle. Lost it. Got it back. Leans inside. Fouled. And they're ahead of the line when we come back. Everybody's showing footwork today. Look at Odom. The spin. They need defensively. Scruggs. Xavier guys, not as much, only three fouls, but this is an important part of the game where both teams are in the bonus. So you're going to see both teams be aggressive. Staying out of being able to foul out of the game is going to be important. So Marquette will be shooting bonus free throws for the rest of the way. First one missed by Lewis, a 76% free throw shooter, 14 points so far today, averaging 14.9 per game. And Goes above his average. That's point number 15 for Lewis. It is down to a five-point game. Here's Nunji way out front against Quick. Jones inside Nunji. Goes up and foul 
fouled by Lewis. And for Lewis, his second foul of the game, and Jack Nunji will head to the line and shoot two. And that's Jack Nunji reading the game. He goes over the screen, but he caught. Well, they trying to, They were trying to view whether it was a too hard of a foul. I mean, that was a good play of the ball. He played the ball, played it up high. Nunji makes the free throw. That is the 25th free throw attempted in the game by Xavier. He goes two for two. He has nine points in the game. Xavier's lead is three possessions. If you mark it, you can't settle for a jump shot initially. Jones spots up for three. Rebound Nunji as he just climbs the ladder for the rebound for Xavier, clad in white. A three possession game, 6.20 to go. Nunji, position inside on Quet, the pump fake, and the left hand score by Nunji. When you're playing against a shot blocker like Quet. Using your body, using angles, and using footwork, along with pump fakes, is how you score. Double-double, 11 points, 11 boards, and there's Lewis. Correction, it's Morcel inside. Daryl Morcel has 14 points of the game. This is his ninth game of the year, scoring in double figures. Good job by Morcel, continuing to back down, getting a close shot. But Nunji should have came over and blocked the shot as he saw the repeated back down by Morcel. Jones, Hunter for three. Rebound, out of bounds, and they say back over to Marquette. All right, so Dickey, Marquette struggling from the field so far today, uh, shooting in the low 40s, down seven. How does it uh, chip away at this lead here down the stretch? Well, coming down this possession right now, they have to recognize whether Xavier's in a man-to-man -man or two-three zone. Whatever one they end, they got to get a ball screen and try to get to the paint to create an opportunity for a teammate. It has to be aggressive. Kolek brings out that three. Rebound by Xavier and Nate Johnson. Here's Jones on the baseline. And has to come back out. Under five to play. Shot clock inside of 10. Jones skips it in the corner to Johnson. Johnson all the way. Fouled on his way to the cup, but he'll head to the line for two free throws. And see, what Marquette should be doing is what Xavier just did, that possession. They were patient. They were poised. They worked the ball around. And then Johnson, a shooter, knowing that the defender has to play up on him close, puts the ball on the floor versus a freshman and gets the foul. Johnson at the line, 13 points right at his average, a 68% free throw shooter. That one is missed. Johnson played his first three years of college at Gardner-Webb in the Big South, transfers to Xavier in the Big East. And last year, Johnson was fourth in the nation on three-point shooting at 45.2 percent oh no johnson can make shots but he also has athleticism and again i said it earlier he's a good defender he can guard the ball he plays passing lanes There's Kolick playing with four fouls, rips it inside to Igadaro for the lane. And that's what you need to do if you're the Golden Eagles. That was what was missing when Kolick was sitting on the bench in foul trouble. Penetrating, sharing the ball, making plays for your teammate for easy buckets. For Kolick, his fifth assist of the game, he averages 5.6 helpers per game this season. That leads the Big East. Six to shoot. Hunter inside Nunji. Quick turnaround. No. And the weak side rebound by Morcel. Under four minutes to go. And Marquette up the court down six. Elliott hits a two. 
Good defensive possession by Marquette. This is what you need right now if you're trying to chip away the players. And even though you lost those games, if I'm Shaka Smart, I still have to feel good about my team. I still have to feel good how they perform the difficult season or opponents they've had early. All this is for building blocks to help later on in the season. And yeah, Marquette playing another ranked team on the road here today in Xavier. Xavier's red hot, 10 and 1 record. It has won eight straight on this floor. Six wins overall coming into the game today. Shot missed inside by Hunter. Kept alive by Jones. Shot clock did not reset inside of 10. Hunter for three. Three down Lewis for Marquette. Marquette doing an excellent job the last two possessions coming up with big stops and finishing the defensive possession with securing the rebound. Now it has to translate into a successful offensive possession. Elliott for three. His second of the game. He trims the lead down to a one-point game. And it doesn't get any more successful than that when you have your best playmaker, Colin Abgen, five assists a game, finding your best shooter. Greg Elliott knocking down a corner three. This is where I talked about Kolick was missing in the game when he was sitting on the bench. Creating shots for his teammates, finding Elliott for a three ball corner pocket. Greg Elliott, the best three-point shooter on the team. He comes off the bench. He is shooting 52% from downtown this season. The foul is on Marquette. Two shots coming up for Hunter, and the first one is missed. And we already talked about when we showed this matchup, Marquette Xavier, how close these games have been. And I said earlier, <laughs> when Xavier was up by 10, Brock, that this game was going to be close. We showed the foul trouble. That's going to be important down the stretch. And free throws I talked about were going to be important. This is both, and Marquette can take the lead on this trip. 2.40 to go, 70 to 69, Xavier. Kolick, Iguodaro. Elliott for the lead. No, rebound by Jones for Xavier. I'm okay with that possession. I'm okay with that possession because you got a paint touch. You gave the ball up. Now you can get the three-point shot by your best three-pointer. I'm good with that. Shot clock at 10. Here's Jones making his move on the baseline. Johnson. Jones got it. 11 points for Kobe Jones, and Xavier takes a three-point lead. A timeout taken. Xavier has in the bonus. Double bonus shooting for Xavier. And Dickey, 2.04 to go. What do you expect to see here from both teams down the stretch? Even though the Golden Eagles are only down by three, you don't settle for a three-point shot right away. There's plenty of time left in the game. You're talking about two minutes left. You have the possession. You want to attack the paint still. That is the focus. You're in the bonus. You can get to the free throw line. That's what you need to do. Kolick for the tie. No. Weak side rebound by Johnson for Xavier. Kolick only shooting 20% from three. I don't know about that possession of that shot when you just penetrated and made a play for your teammate. Johnson, Nunji for the jam! Brock, this is the difference between a young team and a veteran team. The execution factor. Lewis missing the slam dunk attempt and the rebound by Odin for Xavier. Coming up on one minute to go, and it's a two possession game, and they reach in and foul. Delon Odin, he'll go to the line and shoot two. This is the difference between a young team and a veteran team. The execution. Nunji, a veteran college player. They're in the ball screen action. He's getting the pass from another veteran college player, Johnson. Seeing and reading how the defense is playing, sharing the ball, and precision on the pass for a dunk by Nunji. Dwan Odom at the line. 
having a career night, 17 points, make it 18, a new career high for him today. Xavier has gone to the foul line now 32 times in this game. And when you look at this game right now, the last two possessions pretty much dictated how this game is going to finish. The three-point shot by Marquette, by Kolek, the miss, and then the execution by Xavier in the critical of the game. Lewis, Kolek, under a minute to go. Back door to Elliott, puts it in. Good defense by Kobe Jones playing it high, but excellent offense by Greg Elliott. Body control, concentration, soft touch. Team summary, and how about the points in the paint and the bench points by Xavier today? That is the story of the game. Xavier taking advantage of the point paint points where Marquette settled for a lot of three-point shots, not being a high-level three-point shooting team. Right now, the Golden Eagles have to jump the game up. They have to play for steals and foul right away. You want to extend this game. Need to get a foul. Need to get a foul. And timeout taken by Travis Steele and Xavier. He did not like the way that possession was looking. 15 to shoot, 40.8 to go to in the game. Xavier ball, Xavier. Xavier. Or the person that's not comfortable with handling the ball, try to come up with a steal and if not, foul right away. I call this junking up the game to extend the game. They inbound at the backcourt to Nunji into Odom's hands. Ten seconds to shoot, 35 to go in the game. Odom in the trees, finds Johnson wide open. Hits a three! His third three of the game. He has 17 points, and it's an eight-point Xavier lead. So I'm taking it that Marquette elect. Score layup, they get it in, foul it again. Again, I call this junking up the game. Make 28 seconds feel like five to ten more minutes of the game. Maybe you frustrate Xavier into making careless plays. Now, if you penetrate and you're able to kick out for a three, then make that pass. And Kolek throws it in the backcourt. It's over and back, a turnover on Marquette. And it goes back over to Xavier. Well, Marquette played for the three-point shot right there. They were playing for an action for Kolek to dribble in and Elliott to come off his back for a pitch pass for a three. I think if you get a hard penetration first, you can still find Elliott for an open three. Holding foul called on Greg Elliott. He's fouled out of the game. Here's the last play. Kolek stopping there trying to... Miscommunication, Elliott's supposed to run off his back so he can get the pitch three. I would have had Kolek penetrate the paint hard, make the Musketeers turn their back, get a misdirection play, and maybe a veer screen for Elliott to get open. Scruggs crawls in the free throw, give him five points of the game. Paul Scruggs, preseason, first team all Big East this season. Brock, when you look at the Musketeers, they have everything you need for a winning team. They have the heart and soul right here shooting free throws. A defensive specialist can make plays. They need to make free throws. They have stretch bigs, but Marquette needs to score quick right now. Kolek whips it inside to Igadaro. It's out of bounds off of Xavier. 13.3 to go. Xavier also has stretch bigs who can play inside and outside. The team is an excellent passing team, and they are all together in a collective defensive effort as a team. Cam Jones one more time. Almost banked in a three. Rebound Nunji. And Xavier will just run out the clock. The Xavier Musketeers win it over the Marquette Golden Eagles. 80-71, the final. The difference in this game with points in the paint by Xavier and execution by a veteran team versus a young team. And Xavier.